Welcome to the Unstuck Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Miner. This weekly no fluff mindset show arms you with the practical tools you need to get unstuck so you can get exactly what you want out of life. Remember, when you change your mind, your life will follow. Let's get into today's episode. Hey there, friends. Welcome back to the Unstuck Podcast. Thank you, as always, for joining me here today. So grateful for you. So happy to be here. Let's chat about perfectionism. Well, I think a lot of us are perfectionists. And so I may lose some friends here today when talking about the problem with perfectionism. But if you're a perfectionist, I think you might know that there are some not good things going on with your perfectionistic tendencies. And so we're going to talk about that today. We're going to kind of show the the dark side of perfectionism and how we can start to just, I guess, be a little bit more accepting of imperfection. So we're going to do that here. First, I just want to let you know of a new challenge I have for you all. This would be a great challenge for those of you who are trying to get off the diet roller coaster once and for all. So this is really going towards my ladies who have been very similar to me, on a diet for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. I was 20 uh, years on a diet and you're ready to just learn how to eat intuitively, learn how to understand more about why you don't trust yourself with food, why you feel the need to diet, why you feel like dieting is the answer to changing your physical body, all these things that we kind of have been taught I want to help you unlearn some of those and help you dive in a little deeper and become your own guru when it comes to your food and your diet and your body and all that stuff. So I've created a five-day food freedom challenge. It's an email challenge. So every morning you will get sent an email for five days with just a simple task. Uh, There will be some obviously learning involved. You'll understand a little bit more about the process to finding food freedom. And then you'll have one little small task to do for that day. And by the end of five days, you're set up to go on this adventure of finding true food freedom. So you can eat intuitively, you can drown out the rest of the noise of the diet industry and do what's right for your body from this place of love and acceptance and care and concern and all that wonderful stuff. So if you would like to get in on this five-day food freedom email challenge, by the way, it's completely free, free challenge, head to seanminer.com slash food freedom. To get started, seanminer.com slash food freedom. I'm so excited. This was really, really fun to do. And I can't wait to help more of you with this. I still see this as such a problem in just everywhere, just all over. This diet roller coaster that just has taken such a toll on us physically, mentally, and emotionally. And I am setting out to change that one person at a time this time it's you. Seanminer.com slash food freedom to get started there. All right, here we go. Perfectionism. Man, trying to be perfect can really cause some massive stuckness on so many levels, which means it's something that we need to talk about here on the Unstuck podcast. This is something I see time and time again with the clients that I have worked with, gosh, seven and a half years of working one-on-one with people or in groups with people and seeing perfectionism as being something that is holding people back. And we've got to get through that. We've got to get through that to this place where we can actually be okay with imperfection which then will allow us to become unstuck and start living our true purpose and passion and dream life and all that good stuff. 
So when I think of perfectionism, I think of it kind of in this bullseye type format where if you're a perfectionist, you aim for that bullseye. There is no other option than for you to get right in the center of that tiny circle. And that is all there is to it. And if you don't get in that tiny little circle, then you've lost and you're a failure. So you've got to get in that circle. So you spend a ton of time and energy trying to figure out how to make sure you definitely get right into that bullseye. Just so much time, so much energy. There is no other way. I've got to figure this out. And for a lot of uh, perfectionists, what that actually turns out to be is that you don't even try because there is a chance that you might not get right into that bullseye of perfectionism. You're just not even going to try. Why even bother trying when there's a chance that you won't come out of this perfectly? But what perfectionists don't see or don't understand is that Those rings around that center tiny circle are also great. There is also a ton of good to be had in those other rings around the bullseye. There's joy, there's happiness, there's love, there's acceptance, there's peace, there's freedom, there's success, there's purpose and possibility in those other rings. But since you're only focused on that one ring, that one ring of perfection, you miss out on all the other possibilities in those rings around it because you either are only going to be satisfied if you get that perfect ring or you're just not even going to try and going to miss out on all of it. So that is how I view perfection as someone I honestly never was a perfectionist. I feel like I tried to be and I wanted to be for a very long time because I think there's this stigma that perfection is something we should be striving for, that we should be working towards and should actually be spending our energy and time doing. At least that is the environment that I grew up in. So I think I thought I should be perfect. I should be trying to be a perfectionist, but I'm not. I'm just not. And as soon as I was able to see that and grasp that, which came with my mindset work that I started doing four years ago. So that it was just four years ago that I realized I didn't have to try to be a perfectionist. And when I was kind of able to get that bullseye thought process around perfectionism going in my own head, I was able to let go of that and really then hone in on all of the goodness and beauty in those surrounding rings of that perfectionism. So I can tell you that no, I'm not a perfectionist. I don't really think I ever was, but I felt like I needed to try to be for a very long time. And some of you might be in that place now. And hopefully this talk on perfectionism will show you that you don't have to strive for that, that imperfection is a wonderful place to be too for so many reasons. And we're going to go through those today. My quote for you today, I don't know who said it. I don't think I made it up, but it was written in one of my notes from many of my note-taking things that I do. So I'm not exactly sure where I got this and I tried to Google it and I couldn't find anything, but I'm going to share it with you anyway and we'll just cite it as unknown, but please let me know if you know who said this. The opposite of perfection isn't imperfection, it's reality. The opposite of perfection isn't imperfection, it's reality. Let's talk a little bit about why we are perfectionists, those of you that are striving for that or who have gotten there and and fully view yourself as a perfectionist. Why does that happen? 
Uh, it comes really down to those limiting beliefs yet again. There are so many possibilities of what that belief might be for you, but often when we really boil perfectionism down, it's one where you've either deemed yourself unworthy of something or not enough in some way. And so you strive for perfection to prove your worthiness and your enoughness. So many, many times when we really get into that awareness piece of our limiting beliefs, we can really drill down and find that our perfectionist tendencies are really because we are trying to prove worthiness and enoughness. So for instance, you think having a perfect body will prove to that boy in middle school who told you that you were ugly and chubby that you're not. It will prove him wrong. You think being perfect at your job will prove that you are smart enough. You think having the perfect kids will prove that you're a good mom. You think building the perfect website will prove that you're capable of having your own business. These are just some examples of, and again, we don't know necessarily that this is what we're doing. We don't know why we're striving for perfection in these categories and that underlying story that we're really trying to prove until we actually do the work around it, until we actually figure it out. So you just think you want to have a perfect body or you want to be perfect at your job or you want to have perfect kids or this perfect website and you don't understand the proving part necessarily. You don't tap into that on this conscious level. It's something that is subconscious and kind of in the background playing your perfectionism out. And as you can see, what's really happening here is we're using perfectionism as an outside mechanism, I guess we can say, to try to prove our beliefs wrong. And we know because of the work now we've done in 50 some odd episodes of the Unstuck podcast that that doesn't work. Trying to use an outside source to fix an internal problem isn't how it goes. It has to be an inside out job. We have to do the work from the inside before we can understand and and change things in our external environment. Now, before we get into some of the not so great things about perfectionism, I will say, of course, I think a lot of you that are perfectionists can agree with this. There are some perks to being a perfectionist. Quite often, those people are usually super driven They're very detail-oriented, and those are two characteristics that can come in super handy at times. Maybe in your career, whatever career you do, you need to be driven and detail-oriented, and perhaps your perfectionist is really doing wonders for you, but now maybe it's gotten too far, or now you're bringing that into other parts of your life where that's not required, and, and it's snowballing. Uh, Or maybe, you know, perfectionism in home improvement projects, I personally think is great. My partner is a perfectionist. She calls herself a recovering perfectionist. She's trying to get herself out of that. Uh, But there are times when we're hanging a picture or trying to put the rug in the exact right spot underneath the bed or something like that, where it is so great that she is a perfectionist because I would just be like, eh, good enough, let's go, and it would look terrible. (laughs) So it is really nice to be a perfectionist sometimes. I think especially when it comes to decorating a home, hey, that's great, or like trying to fix your toilet yourself or hang some shelves or something, it needs to be perfect for the shelves to not be crooked and everything to fall off of them. So that comes in handy when you are a perfectionist. But of course, what we're going to focus on today are the downsides to perfectionism. And I think it's so important to talk about this for a few reasons. The first one is health-related. 
I have worked with lots of people over the past almost eight years uh, in the wellness space. And I think one thing that is super common, especially in the women who were quite sick, quite ill with autoimmune disease or some other uh, mystery illness that they couldn't quite figure out, there was this common denominator of striving to be perfect. There was the stress of that involved within that in so many cases. I've been able to kind of create that correlation that I've seen just because of the amount of people I've worked with. Now, I'm not a researcher or a doctor in any of this. I have not studied this. This is your disclaimer right here, right now. But I just think that based on my experience uh, with working with all these individuals, that there is such a big connection between the physical health of your body and uh, the commitment that that person has to trying to be perfect. I really have seen a correlation. Now, there is definitely a correlation between your mental health and your striving to be perfect. There are studies that suggest that the higher your perfectionism, the more psychological disorders you're going to suffer, depression, anxiety, um, OCD, um, ADHD, insomnia. I even saw cases where they were showing a correlation with migraines. And, you know, in the very highest rung, even suicide. And so that's really where we can see how perfectionism, we have to talk about it in even in terms of getting mentally, emotionally and physically unstuck. But then also, I really, if we're talking now more energetically and spiritually, I think trying to be perfect really dampens that person's ability to raise their vibration, to connect with their intuition, to feel into their intentions, to be able to see themselves as their future dream self and create this life that they love. I really see it, again, as being a sticking point to where they can't uh, grow, they can't expand into who they want to be spiritually and energetically because they're so rooted in their perfectionism. So I want to just kind of go over just, I have this list of things I wanted to talk about. It's not like an action item or to-do list or anything like that. It's just a list of eight things that I wanted to make sure to talk about when it comes to perfectionism. So let's go through them in no particular order. It's one of those episodes. The first thing, striving for perfection is super duper stressful. And I have seen this firsthand so many times. And I think this is one of the main reasons why it does affect us physically and mentally with our health, with our mental health and our physical health because of the stress involved in trying to be perfect. Often perfectionists create goals that are totally impossible to achieve and then they don't achieve them and they feel poorly about themselves and create low self-esteem in themselves. So gosh, stress, we know how hard it is to deal with stress and Putting so much pressure on yourself to try to do everything perfectly is just creating an even deeper level of stress that really does not need to be there. And we know the health implications, the mental and emotional implications of stress, but also energetically, the implications of stress are really important to note. Number two Perfectionism creates a sense of overwhelm by making tasks seem bigger and more involved than they actually are. So now not only are we stressed about that goal we set or that thing we're trying to do perfectly, but we also feel overwhelmed. All of a sudden we take, you know, hanging a picture on the wall And it turns into this full day process. We have to go get more tools. We have to get more, uh, make sure we're measuring it five times and make sure it's absolutely perfect. And we've got to test it out. And then, oh my gosh, it didn't happen. You know, that is stressful and overwhelming. Just 
thinking about it. And that is just obviously a very benign um, situation. But I know there are people out there that are understanding and and feeling that situation. You've been there, my partner, like I said, she's been there quite often. And so now take that and amplify it into all these other really significant areas of your life, your job, your financial situation, your partner, your children, all these other areas where you're also trying to be perfect. And that magnifies by a hundred, that overwhelm and that stress. So that's another reason why perfectionism might not be the route to take for you. Number three, it pulls valuable energy away from other parts of your life. I think that goes without saying, but remember, energy being time, money, attention, focus, emotion, these are all forms of energy and you're taking that away when you are spending so much time trying to be perfect in one or more areas of your life on other pieces of your life that you are probably at this point ignoring because you don't have the attention to put towards it. So keep that in mind that really creates this really large imbalance in your life, which I think the ideal situation for all of us is to find this place of balance in all facets, all spokes of our life situation. All right, next one, number four, perfectionists tend to be more critical, both of themselves and others. Of course, think about think about being critical to yourself. Does that seem like a good way to use your energy? Like it's putting you in a good high vibe place? Of course not. And then of course the same thing goes towards others. So being critical is only dampening and only lowering, I guess, your vibration and keeping you in this never ending cycle of stuckness and then trying to be perfect and then it's not happening and then we get stuck even more. So I think it's really, really important to get real with yourself on if your perfectionism is now causing you to be extra critical of both yourself and the people in your life who are not being as perfect as you want them to be. So that is something that is going to take quite a bit of awareness on your part and could potentially change a lot for you when you see that playing out. Number five, perfectionism tends to get in the way of creativity and a flow state creativity. It's very hard to be creative when you're so worried about how it's going to come out, how perfect it is or isn't going to be, what you're going to do if it isn't perfect. You know, those constant thoughts about perfection really dampen the ability to create. And then when I say flow state, this is really something that I've just been using as a term a lot lately, which is this place where everything just flows, especially when it comes to work, really anything, your work, your home life, your love life, your financial situation, everything just flows so easily. It just feels right. The next step is always there and it's always right and it's always good and you just feel good and it just flows. There's no forcing. We've talked about the difference between forcing and flowing in alignment versus out of alignment this is where we flow. And it is really hard to get into a flow state when you're also striving for perfection in everything you do. Number six, it keeps people from sharing their message and purpose with the world because they won't put themselves or anything they've created out there until it's perfect. Oh my gosh, this, this, this. This is something I see so much when it comes to entrepreneurship. There are so many amazing entrepreneurs out there with this incredible message and this deep purpose and passion, but they are so worried about not being perfect that they don't ever share that message. They don't ever put themselves out there or any of the work that they've done out there 
because it's not perfect or because they're scared it's not perfect. And that breaks my heart because entrepreneurship is never going to be perfect ever, ever, ever. And what happens is then it we get so focused on that that then all of a sudden we lose our real purpose and mission in life, which is, you know, if you're someone in the wellness space, it's to help other people get well and and get healthy and figure out what's what's going on with them physically, mentally, and emotionally. And you keep from helping others because you're so worried about being perfect. And that is heartbreaking uh, on so many levels. So I see this so, so much. And I really want to work to turn this around because there are so many people doing great things that aren't putting anything out into this world yet. And it might be you. Number seven, it keeps people from going after their dreams because they can't do it perfectly. Again, they don't see, if you're a perfectionist, you don't see this perfect path to get to your dreams or you're so worried about it not being perfect or you just know there's going to be bumps along the road, which yeah, there absolutely 100% will be bumps along the road to your dreams. That's just how it goes. And we're going to talk more about those bumps uh, in a second. But you focus so much on how imperfect it could be that you don't ever go after your dreams, you'd rather stay, well, your ego would rather stay in its safe ego bubble where perfectionism can possibly exist because you've done everything a thousand times and you're just on your autopilot mode. But to branch out and try something new and reach for your dreams can't be done because it might not be perfect. Again, very sad. We do not want that. We want to break away from that so that we can live our dreams. Last one, perfectionism can look like procrastination. This is just kind of a side note that I want to make sure to include. We can use perfectionism as an excuse to not move forward. It kind of combines point six and point seven, the ones we just went over, and how now it would potentially look like you're procrastinating when really it's based in perfectionism. And this is something I really want you guys, if you are someone that's dealing with either procrastination or perfectionism, to see in yourself, to see if they correlate, to see if one is a circumstance of the other. Uh, Quite often, procrastination and perfectionism will be used as an excuse. You will use that yourself as an excuse to keep you in your safety comfort zone, to keep you in your bubble. So a lot of times we'll just think we have this perfectionist tendency or we'll procrastinate to keep ourselves safe, to keep ourselves in the bubble. It's our ego chatter. It's that mean girl chatter really telling you that it's not perfect, so you can't can't do it, can't move forward, which really we know that's what all of perfectionism is, knowing that it's rooted in our limiting beliefs. When we have this desire, this need to be perfect, that's coming from our mean girl. That's coming from that voice that is trying to keep you safe and stuck and tucked away in your comfort zone, in that bubble where nothing can harm you. So that is really where it's coming from there. Just a little side note there, so you can start seeing how all of this is fitting together, all of these workings, especially as they relate to your mean girl voice and to your limiting beliefs. And if you're a procrastinator, how interesting is that? All right, let's move on to a few tips I have for you on how you can overcome perfectionism. First, you know I'm going to say this. I've already mentioned this already in this episode and every other episode of Unstuck. It starts with awareness. It is going to help you so much to know why you're trying to be so perfect, why you're trying to do everything perfectly. What is it that you're trying to fulfill? What do you think you're trying to prove? What will this perfect outcome help you prove in your life? 
Um, Is it worthiness? Is it that you're enoughness? What is it? So this is where we just create those stories. We just keep asking ourselves questions and really dial it in, really get curious until we can find that answer. And it will come. You do have it. It is in there. But really start asking those questions I just said and see where it goes. So I'll repeat them. Why are you trying to be perfect? What is it that you're trying to fulfill? What do you think a perfect outcome will help prove in your life? So what are you trying to prove? Ask yourself that. See what comes up. I recommend journaling, of course. Number two, when you feel dissatisfied, angry, or unsettled in any way, ask yourself if it's because the situation or the person involved is different than what you consider to be perfect. This is really eye-opening because a lot of times when we have that unsettled or dissatisfied feeling or even when we just feel stressed or anxious or something, it's because something isn't going as we hoped. It isn't going perfectly, I guess. And so we really need to ask ourselves and and just come to terms with that, that so much of what we're considering uh, to be dissatisfaction is simply because we're trying to create this perfect existence and someone or something isn't matching up to what we think or we consider to be perfect. Super eye-opening. I highly recommend you keep that in your back pocket to bring out whenever you are having those moments where you do feel angry or unsettled or dissatisfied and see why. See if it does have to do with someone not acting or behaving or situation not going in the way that you think is perfect. Number three, we've got to practice accepting imperfection. Here's where I want to talk about those blips on the radar of trying to get to our dreams or when trying to be perfect and instead we fail. So what if failure isn't anything but a learning experience? Because really that's all it is. So that blip on that radar, the ups and downs of life on the path to your dream life, these failures, these things that you're seeing as failures, they're nothing but a learning experience. So the reaction is not, oh man, I failed. I can't believe I did this. I'm so useless. I'll never get anywhere in life. You know, the ego chatter, the spiral. It's not that. It is, oh, what am I learning from this? What can I take from this? What, where am I growing and expanding because of this? That is how we approach failure. And I just realized this could be a whole huge podcast episode. So we'll plan on that in the future. But for now, when it comes to your uh, desire to be perfect, and then what happens when you're not perfect and how you view that, instead of it being a failure, can it just be a learning experience? And can it really actually just be your ticket to expansion, to growth, to becoming the real you, and to getting you one step closer to that dream life. So this is how we can start the process of accepting imperfection and knowing that imperfection is great. Like I said at the beginning, imperfection is just reality, and it's great, and there's so much goodness in those other circles around that bullseye. So you don't have to get right in the center to get all of it. In fact, there's a lot more to be had in all the areas around that and all the imperfectness around what you're trying to achieve. Number four, do an energy assessment. So like I said, there is a lot of energy waste 
when we are trying to achieve perfection in any area of life. We're spending a lot of our energy towards that one thing. So anytime you start feeling like, well, maybe I am striving a little too hard to to make this perfect, take an energy assessment. See how much energy you're putting into that versus the other areas of li- your life. See if you're putting more time and effort into being perfect in that one way versus spending that evenly towards the other spokes on the wheel of life and see if you can uh, redistribute that if that's the case, which would then require that you just accept the imperfectness and move on. So anytime you're feeling that pull, and it's, if you're a perfectionist, as of right now, as of this recording, as you're listening to this, this is going to happen a lot where you have to do that energy assessment and get real with yourself on how much energy you are putting towards one thing that you're hoping will be perfect someday versus all the other areas of life and try to redistribute. And lastly, we have to remember to enjoy the journey Instead of only looking towards the destination, this is really what perfectionism is all about. It's really understanding that the joy is in the process, it's in the journey, it's in the experience, it's in the learning and the involving and the growing. It's not in the destination alone. And when you are looking towards perfection, you're only looking at that end goal. And usually when you're only looking at that end goal and wanting that to be perfect, then you actually get to this place, like we've talked about this entire time, where the journey isn't that fun. You're spending too much energy. You're spending too much time. It doesn't feel good. You're worried about not being perfect. You're stressed out about it. You're overwhelmed. That's not fun. So the joy is in the journey. So we have to create a journey that feels good and also a destination that feels good. And when you focus on the journey and focus on the energy that you're putting in and making sure that it feels good and it's not stressing you out and it's not overwhelming you, then there is no other way but for the destination to be just as good too. There's no other way. As long as you are focusing on creating the best journey you can, the destination will also be the best. It'll be just as it's supposed to. All right. That is all I have for you today on perfectionism. I hope all of my perfectionist friends are still out there listening and you haven't written me off entirely. I hope I didn't make you too mad, but I did want to call out some of these things just so that you can start seeing if this is the case for you and how it may be affecting your life and your health, your physical health, your mental, emotional, spiritual health, simply because you're striving for something that doesn't even really exist. Instead, we can reach for being great. There's plenty of space. There's plenty of room to do something great versus doing something perfectly. That is a really big distinguisher between perfect and imperfect. It doesn't mean that imperfect is bad. It's really great and you've done some really great stuff and it might just be one tick away from this perfect vision that you had that honestly doesn't really exist. So let's just go with great and see what else happens in your life as soon as you embrace imperfection understand more about what you were really searching for, what you were really trying to prove in your perfectionism, that is some powerful, powerful information that you can have for yourself just in looking at one simple thing, which is your perfectionism. All right. I'd love to chat with you if you have any questions or you want to share what you've been working on. Head over to Instagram at Sean Miner and send me a DM. I'd love to chat with you over there. And until next time, take care. <laughs>